Um, okay, well, so let's, let's go back to the 80s. Let's get in the way back machine. Let's, let's talk about it, yeah, all yeah. right? All right, yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's go back and go see where he got all that white hair on his face. <laughs> I was a newspaper reporter in Chicago. <laughs> Up there in Chicago, driving a pickup truck, finding that you can't drive a truck with a pay any vehicle with a payload in the fast lane. <laughs> I learned that the second day. I also learned that you don't pronounce it Illinois. <laughs> I said, well, if you're dumb enough to put an S in it, I'm dumb enough to pronounce it. And uh, I was, uh, well, he kept going, what's your name? Hank? I said, no, Tony. And they go, you are not a Tony. <laughs> You're not a Tony. Right? <laughs> I said, well, I don't know. My mom saw a movie with Paul Newman in it, and he was an Anthony, so I'm lucky, you know. <laughs> so I was a newspaper reporter, and I'm driving, I'm sort of driving back and forth, uh, in my truck that had no radio and so kind of entertaining myself and uh, covering things. And then I came downtown, uh, back to Nashville, I was visiting my dad and, and helping him remodel some and my brother was there and my brother's like, I want to be a songwriter. And I said, okay, play me something. And he goes, I don't have anything. So then he'd go next day. So I thought, okay, he would go off all day, all night. He lived the lifestyle of a songwriter. So he had that down really good. <laughs> he didn't wake up till the crack of noon, and he didn't come home till wee late. So he'd come back in each time. I say, "What he wrote?" And he said, I, 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 "I haven't written anything." I said, "Okay, well, here's what I wrote. I just pulled this guitar down off my dad's wall that Tanya Tucker had signed. Now my dad goes way back. For those of you, know, my my dad wrote, "Is anybody going to San Antonio for Charlie Pride?" Uh, it's not love, but it's not bad uh, for Merle Haggard. And uh, if we're not back in love by Monday. Uh, anyway, he wrote, he wrote about, uh, in the 60s and 70s. He took care of me real good when, I, when he was having hits. So he always made sure I was taking care of him when I had hits. He thought that seemed <laughs> fair. And uh, so in this truck with no uh, radio, I was coming back in some traffic one day. And... I just thought, man, what would it be a good idea, man, if you had a song that started with, uh, you know, what a rotten day this turned out to be. I thought, everybody can identify with that, right? Right off the bat, I got everybody's attention because I'm looking in my window of my truck with no air conditioning in Chicago, which a place that is that cold in the winter does not seem to be fair to get that hot in the summer. <laughs> do you all have that problem up here in Milwaukee? <laughs> all right, who do we see about that? <laughs> you all need to get a leader. Get that fixed. And so I got back home and I picked up this guitar, this old um, Martin gut strain that I had, and I, and I just thought, okay, what do I do with that? And so, you know, I just was playing a lot. You know, what a rotten day this turned out to be. And I didn't know what to say next, so I just went, what a rotten day this turned out to be. I like that right there, right there. What do you want to say? I don't know. What a rotten day this turned out to be. And I kept doing that over and over and over. I could show it to you, but you've got to go home, go to sleep. I was like, I'm doing that over and over. What a rotten day this turned out to be. And my wife sticks her head in from the kitchen and says, will you please sing something else? You're bringing me down. So I thought, okay, wait a minute. How does this work? How does this songwriting thing work? Okay. So I was like, what a rotten day this turned out to be. Okay, why is it rotten? Right? Why is it rotten? When you go home, you're going to be able to write a song. I'm going to tell you how to do it. And you only need three chords. That's the three I'm going to use. The beauty of a three-chord song is no matter what chord you're on, you got a 50-50 shot of getting the next one right. <laughs> now, that's as good as the odds get for me. All right. Here's to the Wisconsin school system. You can do math. You'd be surprised. I've been to the states and they just stare at me like 50, 50 what? That's not a, that's no caliber of a rifle I ever heard of. So I thought, okay, so what makes it rotten? 
right? We're country music. Somebody's got to leave because I'm not going to do a bluegrass song and somebody die. So what a rotten day this turned out to be. I still can't believe she leaves so easily. Hey, that's pretty good. Thing. I like that. I know it rhymed and everything, but what was so easy about it? <laughs> so I thought about that. She just got all her things, threw them into a pile. She loaded a car and said, after a while. <laughs> now I thought, okay, that's all cool and everything. But what would be the thing that would scare me the most if my wife was leaving? Because she's yelling at me? Nah. I still got her attention. See, the difference... If, if they're, if they, you know, raising their voice or looking at you stern, putting that line in the head, mm -mm, then that means they still have hope in you. <laughs> the opposite of love is not hate. It's indifference. And if she's really working on me, disappointed, then there's high expectations still. And so I go, okay. The thing that would scare me most is if she walked out and just like didn't cry, right? She's done this before, but this time she didn't cry. And then that boy just, it was easy then. That's why I'm sitting on the front steps, staring down the road. Wondering if she'll come back, this time I don't know. After she packed, when she looked back. There were no tears in her eyes And that's got me worried Thinking maybe my baby's Gotten good at goodbye All the times before She'd break down and cry She'd make her threats but her heart wasn't set on goodbye She just wanted me to hear What she had to say Now I'm lost for words And she went away She may not return This time she didn't cry That's why I'm sitting on the front steps Staring down the road Wondering if she'll come back This time I don't know After she packed When she looked back There were no tears in her eyes And that's got me worried Thinking maybe my baby's Gotten good at goodbye Thank you, George Strait. Now, I wrote that song. I finished it with my brother. And uh, so then it's just sitting on a cassette tape. It's, it's nothing. And I go back to you know, Chicago. And, and uh, Dean Dillon, who wrote all those George Strait hits, comes over to my dad's house. And previously, my dad had cut some songs on a he used to call text nobody who wants to be a singer, right? So well, if you want to be a singer and you want people to get a chance to hear you, you need to go in and you need to do a demo, demo tape and cut some songs and then we can take it around to the, to the record labels and, and do all that. And uh, he wanted to do these songs and my dad said, no, hey, you should do this one. So he gave him Baby's Got to Go Bye. So he went in and cut it. Well, then it ended up on a cassette of a song that uh, my dad and Dean Dillon wrote and then my song was sitting on the, on the end of it. And Dean happened to come by and said, hey, George is cutting right now, and they've cut the record, but they need one more. They just need one more. And so my dad goes, well, here's a song that we've written, Dean, that, you know, this guy, you know, cutting everything. You want to take this cassette? And Dean said, give it to me. I need everything, you know. So he goes in there, Dean plays his songs, and he eventually gets to the song that's my dad and his, and he plays that song. And... Uh, they didn't turn the tape player off. And so my song started rolling. And they're like, oh, yeah, sorry. And they go, no, whoa, whoa, leave it on. 
George Strait heard it. George Strait went in the studio and he cut it. While I'm sitting in Chicago <laughs> in the winter. <laughs> and my dad called me up and he said, look, I sent you a cassette tape of your song and somebody's singing it, but pay no attention to it. George Strait just cut it. And uh, folks, I'm going to tell you, I don't know a lot of things in life, but I know what it's like to win the country music sweepstakes lottery. <laughs> and so I'm forever grateful that somewhere in there, all these little things had to line up that I've got absolutely no control over whatsoever. It's just you write the song and you put it out there, right? That's all there is to it. That's it. And uh, so that put everything in. Tony Morgan. And now you know how to write one, so give us some competition. That's it.